2023 a year of completion and celebration, 2024 a year of rebirth and rebuilding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As many longtime members of St. Gregory's know, on this annual meeting Sunday, uh, I offer what I always stylize as my State of the Union address uh, for the sermon uh, so that everyone can hear it, because I've learned over the years not everybody comes to the annual meeting. Uh, so I want, I want you to hear this. And I always enjoy taking some time to pray and reflect about where I sense God is moving among us uh, and where has God taken us in the past year and where is God leading us uh, into the new year. And as I was reflecting on uh, this new year uh, and this time, I recognize that it's for me one of those seasons where endings and beginnings are flowing together. Uh, another way of envisioning this, it's a threshold moment where uh, what has old has been completed and renewed uh, and what is being born and rebuilt uh, is being uh, revealed to us. And let me say now a little more about, about that. Uh, let me begin by reflecting on 2023, the year of completion and celebration. The year, of course, I think was highlighted by the 70th anniversary celebration uh, that we had and the completing of our phase two of our construction. You might remember way back in the spring of 2023, uh, we prepared to move into Harris Hall for seven or eight months of worship. Uh, we uh, retrieved uh, from the corner that it was in the original cross of St. Gregory's, which now stands in our courtyard entrance narthex. Uh, and our senior warden, Bill Lintz, at the 10 o'clock service on the last Sunday we were worshiping here, led us in procession into Harris Hall, and some of you grabbed prayer books and hymnals, and it was a, a, a liturgical marking of a moment as we processed into Harris Hall uh, to begin our time of worship there. And that time of worship was good, wasn't it? Uh, there was a, a closeness, an intimacy. I think it had to do with just the fact that we were just a little closer together. Uh, the chairs were angled so that we could sort of see each other without turning our heads. Uh, and there was a, a joyous and I would say holy intimacy uh, to our worship uh, in, in Harris Hall. And at the eight o'clock service now, uh, we've actually roped off the first uh, eight pews in the back just to force the eight o'clock folks to sit together uh, to replicate and continue uh, the blessing uh, of, of that time. And, and truly, it was good. I, of course, and Anita uh, uh, um, celebrated and uh, really enjoyed a renewing sabbatical. I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that later in my personal remarks. Uh, but Father Ben and the team kept everything going and going well and strong. Uh, we had some special events during the summer, during the sabbatical, uh, that were highlights and are something I'm sure we will plan on continuing. Uh, we, uh, re I returned and Anita returned in the fall and uh, construction was uh, underway and uh, we, we, I know people snuck in here, you weren't supposed to, but I know people did, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, we watched construction uh, going. And let me just pause there and just remark that all the time uh, we were really fulfilling our planning that began all the way back in 2016 uh, for the uh, renewal of our campus and congregation's life. Uh, that process was kicked off in 2020 with our capital campaign. You remember that. One month before COVID struck, uh, we celebrated the beginning of the campaign and then everything got shut down. And yet we continued. We continued to climb this mountain we called Call to Love. 
led by Nancy Stroud and the Call to Love planning team. Uh, funds were raised, calls were made, and uh, thanks to Rob Mitchell and the team, plans were designed and finalized, and uh, we were able to do our first phase of construction in 2022-2023. Uh, we renewed our courtyard area, our parking lot, of course, uh, the youth room, Harris Hall, uh, conference room, uh, and then we kept raising money. We kept praying. We kept climbing up this mount called to love. And in the start of 2023, as we were celebrating, uh, the construction began. And then we got to the fall. And only God could plan this, truly. The construction was completed to the point that we could re-enter the church on what Sunday? The actual anniversary Sunday of our 70th year. I wish I could claim that I planned that. I didn't. No one in the church did. It was just God's timing for us that we re-entered, led by our original cross, led by our senior warden, back into the church on our 70th anniversary Sunday. We celebrated with our beautiful banner, our gala event that we held thanks to the leadership of Arlie Cox and Carol Bucard, and uh, we, we really celebrated and rejoiced in, in our common life, uh, and, and it was good. And I'm really happy to report what I think we've already reported so that you know this, that we not only raised all the money to do both phases of construction, without incurring any long-term debt. But we were able to do that and even have surplus money to apply towards bringing down the debt that we've been carrying all the way back from the 1990s. Is that amazing? And I'm so grateful to Gary Paris and our financial leaders for Rob and his careful uh, uh, working with the construction to make all that happen. And it all came in, uh, not only under budget, but on time. Well, sort of. We still got to get that pulpit and that lectern, and they are coming, I guarantee it. Um, but it, it, it is a beautiful gift we've been given. And, and it's worth acknowledging, once again, that it was God's grace leading us, but it was also the generosity of all of you. We all dug down deep and we made it happen. And I'm grateful, and I know God is too. It was a beautiful gift we gave ourselves and the future generations of those who will call St. Gregory's home. So thanks be to God. It truly was a year of completion and celebration. But now we're moving into 2023, and what was com being completed, what was ending, is now morphing into what is being reborn and rebuilt. This is, as I've said for several weeks now, um, in my mind, a pivot moment, a threshold moment, a time where the work we've been focusing on, the energy that we've been giving, the faithfulness and creativity, which has been focused on our internal life and, and our church plant. And that was a call from God, and it was and is good, is now being redirected, much as the epiphany season redirects us, to shine the light of Christ, and to reveal that light into a waiting world. And so we find ourselves now at a time of rebirth and rebuilding. Yesterday, uh, nearly 50 members of St. Gregory's gathered uh, for a let's grow time of discernment. And we 
really spent some good time, some holy time, some prayerful time, trying to listen to where the Holy Spirit was leading us now in this pivot time, in this season of rebirth and rebuilding. And from those three hours and those conversations, um, five themes emerged for us uh, from our conversation with the Holy Spirit. The first theme that emerged was that we value our church culture. We value what life in Christ looks and feels like here at St. Gregory's. And for us, that means, here's how we were defining it, we are truly a community of acceptance. We're a place where all God's children are welcomed, valued, equipped, loved, and challenged to share in God's work of transforming hearts and community through Jesus' love. We are increasingly a church that's becoming diverse. Now, I've been saying this in several forms, and I'm going to keep saying it. One of the beautiful things that's been happening at St. Gregory's uh, over the last five years is that um, we are becoming a community that truly reflects our larger community and society in race, uh, in practice, in, in, in who we are. And it's not because there's been any plan to make it happen. It's happened organically. It's happened because the Holy Spirit is forming us as the beloved community. And we love it. I love it. It's good. Our culture here in St. Gregory's is what we termed yesterday a no-fear culture. There's a lot of fear out there in this world. I don't need to tell you about it. There, there's a, a raw, angry, you know, fearful way out there. We all live it. Here, it's not. Here, love reigns. Jesus' love reigns. And it's good, and we can breathe. And we love it. Because it is of God. We practice what's enshrined in our stained glass window in the, the narthex, the welcoming Jesus. And in that stained glass window, we have uh, Matthew 25 kind of enshrined in images. Matthew 25 is where Jesus says, when you were hungry, you gave me something to eat. When you were thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When, you, when I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, uh, you came to me. Uh, when I was naked, you clothed me. And then Jesus said, when you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. In our church culture at St. Gregory's, we don't just talk the talk of love. We walk it. We live it. It's embodied in our Meals with Meaning ministry that is a sort of servanthood front porch to life in Christ at St. Gregory's. And so the first theme that emerges is that we really love, cherish, and offer to the world a way of knowing and following Jesus, a, a culture within this community that is life-giving to us and we believe to the world. And the opportunities that I see, to use the, the metaphor of fishing, remember Jesus saying, I will make you fish for people, is that our church culture is our bait. You know, it's actually what attracts people into, into life that is real and rich, life-giving, eternal. It's Jesus' life. And it's at the heart of our church culture. And what I wonder is, is whether every member of St. Gregory's can say all of this in a 30-second elevator speech. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, that we're able to say, this is who we are. One of our new members who was there yesterday 
um, who's been a member of the community for 18 years, the larger community of Boca. Uh, and, and she joined our church last year. And we're asking, well, why did she join? And she said, you know, uh, she found this, this church culture here. And she added, we're the best kept secret in Boca. You know, it's time to make the secret revealed. Here's the second theme that emerged. We want to grow and strengthen our ministries. We want our ministries to have depth and breadth. We don't want to be a mile wide and an inch deep. So we want to take a good hard look at our ministries and say which ones really need to be strengthened and rebuilt, maybe which need to be given thanks for and say that was of a different time. But we want Christ to be at the center of our life. That was the great learning from our last strategic plan. Spiritual growth and the Christ being at the center of our life. That continues as we move forward, as we seek to create and strengthen, to rebuild ministries that have Christ at the center and that give life. And so this will be a time and a year where we do some of that work. And um, some of it is practical as well as spiritual. Um, we don't have actually all our ministries listed on our website. Why not? And why don't we have a descriptor about them with a connector to who is the leadership and who wants to be involved? I'll tell you this. Not one new member comes to St. Gregory's now without first going to our website. It doesn't happen. And so our website is our digital front porch. We've known that. But now we have to start owning it in deeper ways. One more comment on this theme about ministry growth. Um, we're talking about the need to do an assessment of the gifts and talents in our congregation, meaning your gifts and talents. And I wonder what expertise, what gifts you possess that haven't yet been channeled and um, harnessed for strengthening life in Christ in our community, in our world. Wouldn't that be exciting to discover what we have to give and to start giving that? So second theme, strengthening and growing ministries. Our third theme was our deep, abiding, and joyous energy and commitment to our ministry with our children, our youth, our young adults, our parents and families. We just recognize that this is a essential part of our life and we want to see ever more energy and focus and attention given to this area of our ministry. We value what we are doing. Our Sunday school, and I wish our Sunday school teachers could hear me say this, and I'll say to them, are amazing. I, you, if you want to treat yourself sometime, join me and Gina for a confirmation class. You, you will be astonished. See Anna Thomas in Sibyl Hall working with three and four and five-year-olds, godly play. Watch Terry Hernandez working with our first graders and second graders and third graders. Watch Christian Cheney and Deborah Ballard working with our fourth and fifth graders. Watch Anita Sherman and Maria Patton working with our junior high and our, our teens. It's amazing. You don't see it. It's happening right now. We're proud of our youth group, and not only our youth group at St. Gregory's, but we're part of BRIA, Boca Raton Interfaith Youth Association. How many youth have that chance to meet with youth from other in, uh, faiths and, and gather and, and discover and explore what that means? Happens here at St. Gregory's. And I do want to note, and you know, Anita Sherman, of course, is my wife, but she's also our staff member uh, for youth ministry. I want to remind you, we pay her to work 12 hours a week. That's quarter time, and yet we're making all of this happen. Um, but we need new energy around this, and uh, there is great joy and commitment 
um, to sort of take a fresh look uh, at this, this aspect of our life. That's our, our third theme. Our fourth theme was, how do we get more creative about community engagement and outreach? We value out what we call our on-ramps. You know what they are. You know, yoga mass, beach Eucharist, even song, uh, meals with meaning, ashes to go, the way in which we take the ministry of St. Gregory's and seek to go out into the world and bring the world in to taste and see uh, life in Christ here at St. Gregory's. Uh, and they're good and we're going to continue. But what are some new ways uh, that we can uh, invite people? Certainly, we're looking to resume, as we will this spring, our lecture series, our concert series, our music events. But what more can we be doing uh, to invite people uh, to come in? Here are some ideas that were thrown out um, to turn Meals with Meaning uh, into a new uh, opportunity to serve meals uh, to seniors, both at St. Gregory's and in, in our community, to connect. Uh, perhaps to have some kind of companionship, friendship ministry where we invite people to just come in and say, be a friend, become a friend at St. Gregory's. Um, dinners, um, family dinners, gatherings, ways in which we just say, let's come on in and taste and see. Community outreach and engagement. Finally, and this is really interesting, the last theme that emerged, is a desire to develop a small group in-home ministry program here at St. Gregory's. This, by the way, was Jesus' first evangelism strategy, wasn't it? I mean, where did he begin? He began by saying to a couple of people, come and see, you know, share life with me, uh, and we'll, we'll walk together, we'll talk together, or we'll eat together, uh, and let's have a small group together. That's where, that's where the Christian um, church began. Uh, and we at St. Gregory's have had small group ministry, our, our women's Bible study, our men's spirituality group, our knitters and crocheters group, um, just to name a few off the top of my head, are, are, are certainly ministries that operate and support each other and care for each other the way small groups do. But what we haven't had at St. Gregory's is an intentional opportunity to invite people into a, a place and a community of fellowship uh, in which uh, people are encouraged to, to, to grow and love and share life together in Christ. Uh, and so uh, we sense a new opportunity uh, to, to grow in depth and breadth uh, through our in-home small group ministry. So let's grow. You know, let's, let's um, ride with the with the wind of the spirit that I'm feeling as we move from a year of completion and celebration into a year of rebirth and rebuilding. Let's grow. Now I want to conclude my remarks today uh, with some, as I often do, with some personal remarks. Uh, and uh, I want to begin by um, acknowledging, giving thanks for uh, the amazing staff team that we have at St. Gregory's. I know you know this, but it needs to be said. We do not have a staff at St. Gregory's where uh, someone's just checking the boxes and putting in the hours. Our staff at St. Gregory's give of themselves generously, sacrificially to the ministry here uh, at St. Gregory's, and it is a gift that should be acknowledged and thanked uh, 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 for. And I want to start by saying, you know, I've been working with Father Ben now as a companion in clergy leadership, uh, as now our associate rector and theologian in residence for uh, s almost seven years now, uh, and Ben is such a friend, uh, a fellow priest, a uh, colleague, and a cherished partner in the ministry at St. Gregory's, and um, I can go on sabbatical and know we are in good hands, and we are. So, Ben, I'm just so grateful uh, for you. Um, I'm great. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> I, 
I sensed you wanted to clap and whether you wanted to break into it or not there. <laughs> I was agreeing with you. Uh, you know, um, we're, Deacon Anita just celebrated her 18th year of her anniversary to ordination just last week, in fact. Uh, and uh, Anita has been such a faithful deacon. Uh, and uh, during her years of living in Bondo, Haiti, uh, she so uh, embodied and exhibited to us what servanthood diaconal ministry is all about. So what a gift we have uh, in Deacon Anita. What a gift we have in our associate clergy. Uh, I'm so grateful for Elizabeth Panky Warren. She was at the 8 o'clock. She often goes to the 8 o'clock service. Uh, she also leads our yoga mass and serves as a pastoral counselor uh, in our community. Uh, and uh, we don't get to see him too often because he's supplying at so many churches, but Father Emilio is just a treasured part of St. Gregory's life, and I'm always trying to say, okay, Emilio, come on to St. Gregory's, um, but, but he's working somewhere else, but I know we'll see him more in, in this year. Uh, and then this year, we added two new associate clergy. We now regularly have Father Bruno uh, serving at the altar and helping out uh, with our laying on of hands healing ministry uh, and the Reverend David Potter now is also uh, joined our life as an associate clergy so yay God to, to David and John and then we have this amazing um, professional staff uh, we know this we're just gonna say it we know Timothy Brumfield is world-class and he's a world-class person as well as a world-class musician. Uh, the choir and the music ministry, uh, you know, are so much a part of uh, our life. Where are you? Uh, anyway, yay God. <laughs> uh, and then let me just briefly comment on our other staff. Uh, Gina Valley, who is our director of outreach and supports our pastoral ministries. I call Gina our rock star. She's amazing, uh, and what a gift we have. And she and Rose, her wife, uh, just lead our Meals with Meaning ministry. Uh, Christian Cheney, our parish administrator, we said goodbye last year to Michael Coppinell as he moved. And Christian just walked into the role, and a beat wasn't missed. Uh, and it's just, it just amazing. So I'm so grateful for Kristen. Uh, I think she's setting up the annual meeting details literally as we speak. Oh, no, she's actually teaching Sunday school right now. Um, so what a gift. Um, uh, we have um, our um, facility manager, Steve Demaray, uh, and his partner in life, Sandy McGrath. Um, I was out, as I always am, on Sunday at 5 a.m., uh, and when I finish my run at 6, there's Steve getting things set up for us. You don't see that, but that's where he is, you know, uh, every Sunday morning and, and during the week. Uh, Kay Holt, I, she's here somewhere if she's not setting up. I call Kay not only our office manager, but grandmother of the parish. <laughs> you know, she just, she just lives that role. And, 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 and for me and for the congregation, we have a grandmother of the parish in, in Kay Holt. And wow, aren't we blessed. Uh, uh, Anita Sherman, our youth uh, minister, is, is amazing, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm so grateful uh, for all her leadership and, and what she brings to us. Uh, our our um, financial manager, um, Nancy Brooks, is retiring. It's actually happening in the next two weeks, and we've just hired uh, Kate Fradkin. Uh, I'm so excited about the skills and gifts she'll be bringing to us, so you'll get to learn about and get to know Kate. She's amazing. Dawn Rehicki, our communications person, is um, so gifted and a beautiful person to work with. We're blessed by, by Dawn. Uh, we have, uh, um, Tim, uh, we have um, Randy Berta, our nursery person. And Randy never gets any attention, but she, she's really, she's actually the longest staff person at St. Gregory. She precedes me. Uh, and Louis Biro. Uh, Louis makes our online presence happen. So Louis, great job there. Yay. <laughs> And then Michael Glotti is our assistant sexton who helps us out as well. So what a, what a gifted, gifted staff, um, and I'm grateful for them. I, I want to just end now with my personal remarks, and that is that um, I, I can't express, I, I find it hard to find the words to express the depth of my gratitude uh, about the, the sabbatical I was able to take. 
it's, it's hard to express how life-giving that was for me and how much I needed it and was blessed by it and Anita and I as a couple were blessed by it and I know after um, we raised money for the capital campaign and stewardship I, I, I'm so sensitive to the fact that we often have the hat out to give and I'm also very aware that you gave to make that sabbatical happen and so um, I'm really, really grateful. Thank you. Um, I, and I, I, I know I work with Anita just as a professional staff person, but we celebrated our 37th year of marriage this, earlier this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, she is my partner in life, in ministry, in love. Uh, I, I, as I said in the past, I married above my station, and I know it, and, and, I, and I'm blessed by it. Uh, so it's amazing, and I'm so grateful for our children. This summer, Jacob moved to Seattle, so we don't get to see him as often, but he's thriving, uh, and I'm so grateful for that. Hannah is finishing up her last year at FAU. She's part of the Canterbury Ministry and Canterbury House. Uh, she's sick this morning, um, so she's not here, but... Um, what a, what a blessing in, we have in our daughter. And uh, we have our dog, Zeph, our 12 cats. Uh, Anita always wanted to live on a farm, and we've achieved that vision, I guarantee it. <laughs> and, and then my two moms, my mother, Joan, who's at the St. Andrews community and is always watching online. Hi, Mom. And, uh, and of course, Mom, Susama. And uh, yay, yay, God, for... <laughs> Uh, and then, um, I, I, I know I say this every year, but I, I want you to always hear it. I love you. I am so blessed to be living out this calling as rector of St. Gregory's. Every once in a while, and someone did it just a couple days ago, um, you know, it, why don't you think about being a bishop? I don't want to be a bishop. I want to be a parish priest. And I want to be a parish priest at St. Gregory's. This is where God's called me to be and live and serve. And I love it. And I'm blessed by it. And I'm, I love all of you. And I'm blessed by serving among you. So thank you. And God bless you all. So I'll end with, I say this almost every year because it feels that way. I've been rector for 19 years, and it feels like it's just getting started. So let's grow. Amen. <laughs>